In August, I posted a video about a cottage core lingerie set that I made, and I decided to release the bra pattern as a free pattern. So today I'm going to show you how to make this. When you download the pattern, there is going to be some instructions like how to print out your pattern and how to assemble your pattern, as well as a cut guide for your elastic and some helpful links. But in this video, I won't be going through how to cut out your fabric. You can find the basics of that in the pattern and on the pattern pieces as well. To sew this pattern, you're going to need some lightweight woven fabric, so something like a silk charmeuse or a chalice or a crepe would be great. You need something that's light and airy and really drapeable. You will also need some quarter inch elastic for the upper edge and three quarter inch elastic for the lower band and of course some thread. And you can get the pattern on my website, the link will be in the description. So here's our overall workflow. You can stop and take a screenshot or just pause here if you want to read through it. I'm also going to have a written PDF version of the pattern available for sale if you need some more instruction. Most of the shaping in this bra comes from the gathers down the front. So that is going to be the very first thing we do after we cut out all of our pattern pieces and our fabric. So you'll have two pieces that look like this. This is the body of the bra. Separate them. Then we need to run two rows of basting stitches or gathering stitches down that center front seam to do the shaping. To do the gathering stitches, you want to have a nice long stitch and you're gonna begin by stitching about a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge and go all the way down. When you reach the end of your stitching line, cut a long tail on your thread. That's going to be important for gathering in the next step. You're then going to run a second line of basting stitches or gathering stitches about a quarter of an inch from that first stitching line. So you're in about a half of an inch now. And then you're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. To complete the gathers, you want to find the bobbin side strings or threads and just pull on them and you'll see that your fabric starts to gather up nicely. So always pull on the bobbin side threads. And you want to make sure that both sides gather evenly and are end up being about the same size. Once you have it gathered up and looking nice, just make sure that it is about the same size or smaller than that center front binding piece that you have. Next, you need to place your pieces wrong side together. So that is really important. Make sure your center front seam is lined up and your pieces are wrong side together. So your seam ends up being on the outside of your garment. I like to place a pin at the top and the bottom of my seam, just to make sure that everything stays together nicely. Make sure you switch back to a shorter stitch and we're now going to stitch this seam together and just make sure all of your gathers are sitting nicely because that's kind of the way they're gonna look in the end. So go all the way down to the end and do a nice back tack at the beginning and the end of your stitching line. Here is our seam. You'll want to open up the bra and then press your seam allowance open. It's a little tricky, but it is a very important step. To prepare the binding, fold in the edges of your binding by about half an inch and give that a press. Do that to both sides so you end up with something like this. 
This binding piece gets placed right over top of that seam so it hides our seam allowance. You might want to trim back your seam allowance on the bra a bit if it's sticking out beyond your binding. So just place that on and put a pin in the top and the bottom to keep everything secure. And don't worry if it hangs over a little bit, honestly, it, it doesn't matter. It's just to cover that seam. Using a straight stitch, just stitch down either side of the binding. Make sure your gathers are all arranged nicely. This really locks everything in place. So it's worth taking your time here. And repeat that process on the opposite side. Make sure all your seam allowance is tucked in under that binding. In the original bra I made, I put some lace down either side of the binding and it's a really easy add-on that you can do. Just place it over top and you can either stitch down either side or just down the middle. You can hand stitch, you can machine stitch and just cut it to size basically. But here I decided just to leave it plain. Now we can sew our center back seam and it's really simple. Just place the right sides together and sew it with a half an inch seam allowance. You can finish it with a serger or a zigzag stitch, whatever you like. So now the basic assembly is done and I've just surged my seam and pressed it to one side and we are ready to move on to the elastic upper and lower. First, I start by surging my entire upper edge. The upper edge of the bra gets finished with the ruffle and this narrow elastic. It's either a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch. And this part's a little tricky because you need to hem the upper edge wide enough that you get a ruffle and that you create a casing for your elastic. So it ends up getting hemmed by about five eighths of an inch. So you want to just double check with your elastic to make sure you know where you're going to be stitching. And you might want to go ahead and press that down about 5 eighths of an inch. At your sewing machine, you're going to begin stitching along the lower edge of the hem. So do a back tack to start. And make sure your fabric is folded by about 5 eighths of an inch. It could vary slightly depending on the width of your fabric, but about 5 eighths is what you're going for. So hem the entire perimeter of your bra, but remember to leave an opening or a gap where you're going to insert the elastic into. This does get tricky because it's such a wide hem. So you can kind of see I'm easing this corner in. If you're really struggling, you could always run a row of basting stitches along that upper edge of your bra. And then as you're going around these curves, you can kind of like gather or pull on the bobbin thread of that basting stitch and it will help you ease that curved hem. You have two options when you're sewing your upper casing line. So the most important thing is that your casing is just slightly wider than your elastic. So you can either go ahead and sew your upper casing line now, or you can insert your elastic and then sew your upper casing line around the elastic. I wanted to create a really tight casing, so I actually inserted my elastic first before doing my second row of stitching. So I just attach a safety pin to my elastic.
and put it into that opening that you left. And then go ahead and just feed your elastic all the way through your casing. When you get to the end, just overlap your elastic by about half an inch and then top stitch over that repeatedly to create a really secure anchor. Straighten out your elastic and make sure it's pushed down towards that first row of stitching. And we're going to stitch just above that to create our casing. And I like doing it this way because I can create a really tight casing without then having to struggle to get my elastic in afterwards. But it is kind of a method that requires you to really feel and go slow and make sure you're not catching that elastic in your stitching. And as I sew, I use my fingers to just feel where the elastic is to make sure it's not going to get in the way of my needle. And then when you're done, just go back and close that opening where you put the elastic in with a straight stitch. We are almost done all the hard parts. So now we're just going to sew our lower band into a loop by just sewing down that uh, center back seam. I just like to press this open. Once you've sewn your band into a loop, I recommend just folding it in half lengthways and then pressing it that way. Now it's time to attach the band, which we folded and pressed to our bra. So I just start by pinning it evenly around I always make a notch in the halfway point of my band and I just use that as a marker so I know where to attach it to my center front. And just pin it evenly around. And just like before when we made the casing for the upper edge of the bra, we're going to leave a gap in our stitching line so we can insert the elastic. Once you've got everything pinned in place, you can move over to your sewing machine and stitch the band on using a half an inch seam allowance. And it's really important to remember that you need to leave a gap in your stitching line and in that gap is where you're going to insert the elastic. Just like with the upper edge elastic, I've attached a safety pin. I'm using that just to feed my elastic through. Make sure when you're doing this that you are not accidentally twisting your elastic because that can be a pain to fix. So just keep feeding that elastic through, making sure you don't pull it all the way through. And once you have your elastic in, you can overlap it and just top stitch right over those two pieces to really secure everything in place. I go back and forth quite a few times. And then once you get your elastic inside the band, you can just go ahead and close that opening up. Now 
now our bra has elastic on the top and the bottom for a nice snug fit. And we can go on to our straps, which is our last step. There is a cut guide in the sewing pattern itself. So cut out your straps and then fold them in half lengthways. Use a quarter inch seam allowance to sew them all the way down the entire length of the straps. Next, we need to turn these inside out, and there's lots of ways you can do this. I just use a safety pin. You can get um, special tools for turning things inside out. You can use a long tail of thread on it, but so this is just what I've always done. So once you get your safety pin out the opposite side, you can just keep pulling and your tube will now be inside out. And this is a really long piece because it's the entire width of your fabric. So just keep working on turning that right side out. And then you're going to find the center of it or the middle and you're just going to cut it in half. We want long straps because they get tied at the shoulders. So there you go. And complete that process one more time and you now have four straps. To attach your strap, you're going to place it with the wrong side or whatever side has your seam on it against the inside of the bra just pin it in place and you're going to stitch along the bottom like where your bottom casing stitching line is flip it up and then stitch it again where your upper casing stitching line is and repeat that process on the back and the other side as far as where to place your straps I actually like to try the bra on and then just put a pin in where I like the straps or use a dressmaker's uh, marker or pencil I find depending on somebody's shoulder width, it can really make a difference on where you want those straps to be. I have very narrow shoulders, so I like my straps to be inset quite a bit on the back. So that completes our bra. You can just try it on and tie on the straps. To finish these little ends, you can tuck them under and hand sew them or tie a little knot at the end or be lazy like I am and just leave them. <laughs> but there's lots of different ways you can finish it. Uh, this is a project where your fabric choice is going to make a big difference in the overall fit. I can say this fabric here that I chose, it was uh, like a vintage cotton I found at Value Village. It's quite a tight weave and it fits a little smaller than some of the other pieces, the other bras that I've made with a looser weave. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. I based it off of a vintage pattern from my collection. So it has a real retro vibe. It would be super cute with a pair of high-waisted pants or shorts in the summertime or just as comfy, cozy sleepwear. I would love to see what you make following this pattern. You can always tag me on social media at Olulu. That's Olulu with three H's. I know that's confusing, um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.